by taking this and rotating it forward, we bring this gin into the design, right? It's not towards the back now, it comes towards and the front. And from the movement of the trunk, okay? We always want to avoid 90 degree angles, right? So we want to avoid perpendicular and parallel lines to the edge of the pot. This allows us to have angles on every bend in this trunk so that we avoid these 90 degree angles with the uh, so, edge of the pot. Uh, moving forward, what we've got to do to make this design really work. If we bring the, the defining branch of the tree over into here, is this going to create a good tree? we here the voornaamste pak samen brengen en opbouwen. Here. What do you think? You like that? Yeah. Would I give you about this moment? No. Could be. What if we bring it here? Andere zijde. Okay? Yeah. Apex here. We bring the branch right in here. Alright, so what we've got to be careful of is we have a, a gin that's very long. Okay? Maybe we cut this off. Maybe we cut this off. Maybe, but not yet. Right? But if we want to utilize this, then we have it. And so at, since we have it, we should try and utilize it. Right? We've got to reduce the width of the tree. Okay? So if the tree moves this way, it becomes this long. Okay? But if we bring the tree back this way, now the tree is only this long. So this looks bigger and so in order to do yeah. this properly and not take the main branch and cross the front of this trunk which we want people to see we've got to bring this point to this point so on the trunk. we're going to do now there's two ways to do it we can try and just bend it and hope it doesn't break or we can cut a notch out and bend it and know that it's not going to break but we also know that we're limiting the distance that we can move What's that best branch way? this will show you the best method and we will off with a zware span to the work should we go for it? Huh? We'll come in. We'll go for it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that was the solution. Okay, we're going to go for it. So while I'm doing this, uh, if Mikhail has something else he wants to add or is drawing, um, he can do that. And uh, if you guys have any questions, talk to me while I'm, while I'm doing this. He does not pull and turn at the same time because the wire will break. This is why he makes sure that he is pushing uh, it, and the other one is just turning. Not to do the same uh, at, at the same time. It will break. Oh, really? Oh, great. Yeah, here comes the is studying with my semi father. My semi Mr. Ja, met dat stuk gereedschap lukt het niet. Is niet groot genoeg. Vandaar dat hij verder gaat met de, ja, de werkwijze van de juist en zeer langzaam aantrekken. En if there are any questions, uh, raise your hand. Als jullie vragen hebben, doe maar. Ook een question? Geen vragen? No questions? Merci. Yeah. 
slowly. Coming along, maybe. So so. En eerst de indruk. Ja. En eerst de indruk. Wat denken jullie? Any ideas? Anything that could be better? Anything I shouldn't have done? Yeah. <laughs> Anything at all? Good. I wonder. I Uh-huh. Okay, so we've got uh, three hours, and maybe this can happen last, okay? So we'll work, we'll work with that last, we'll take the park off and make it look nice. But I want to get this style in for everybody so we can see what kind of tree we have, okay? The vraag was waarom, yeah. waarom men nog niet gewerkt had hier aan die grote in, bijvoorbeeld het wegnemen van die bas. We can imagine this, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, it's light, we're good. We can't imagine this though, right? So let's get this style in. En spaart ons dus. Uh, ja, een grapje dus. Hij uh, zegt van in Amerika moet voortdurend praten, maar omdat de mensen niet in slaap zouden vallen, dat ze niet zouden doorgaan of zo. Maar hier heeft hij juist uh, tegenovergestelde gekregen om, omwille van de vertaling, wat helemaal niet waar is natuurlijk. We don't hear. Huh? We don't hear. You, your microphone is not working. Is that a problem? Now you're here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. While we are on this subject, uh, I understand it's the first time for you to be in Europe. Is that correct? Yeah. So you are. Are you still not confused? I mean, so confused about what? About well, about five different languages on the on the lunch table. But anyway, what the serious question is? Uh, how does that compare what you see here? This whole convention so far, what you have seen, from what you're used to. Ah. Uh. Uh, European bonsai is very serious, do you not agree? Yeah, bonsai in Europa is heel ernstig, wordt ernstig genomen, wij zijn dat trouwens ook. And so for me, coming from the United States, uh, as much as doing bonsai, when I'm on stage, I have to be an entertainer. In Amerika wordt er van hem eerder verwacht dat hij een entertainer is. So, to be here and to be able to focus on bonsai and have people that can appreciate what I'm doing, uh, it's a tremendous opportunity for me, and it's something that I'm really enjoying. What I'm saying is, an enorm buitenkans om gewoon te mogen tonen wat ik kan en bezig zijn met die boom en die andere elementen kunnen blijven liggen. So, thank you. Ik wil dat te horen dat een Amerikaan zelfs geen kans zou hebben om bij hem te gaan studeren. So I went home and I wrote him a letter. Hij is dan terug naar huis gekeerd en heeft hem een brief geschreven. And then the next month I wrote him another letter. The next month I wrote him another letter. And for two years, every month I wrote him a letter. Dit is de ja, ik steeds op nieuw brieven geschreven gedurende twee jaar. So one month before I graduated university, uh, he wrote me a letter back. En precies een maand voordat hij dan zijn ja graduate zijn in Amerika zijn diploma haalde, en diploma haalde, heeft hij dan toch een brief teruggekregen. And he said, if you really want to come study that bad, go ahead, but you're going to fail. Uh, als je dan toch absoluut wilt komen studeren, kom maar af, maar je gaat het niet halen. Mooie boodschap. So I said okay, and I went. And the first time that I met him, when I got to Japan to study, he said, um, "You're no different than a dog to me. I don't care where you sleep, I don't care what you eat, as long as you're here to work, it matters not to me." Uh, toen hij daar dan aankwam, dan uh, ja, heel veel uh, medewerking kreeg hij blijkbaar niet. Ik kreeg de mededeling van waar je slaapt, waar je eet enzovoort. Uh, dat trek ik me niet aan, uh, zolang als hier maar werkt. So I said, okay. And uh, I started working. Now, he didn't treat us like dogs, uh, but he was very hard on us. And Bonsai was only 50% of so what the other 50% Japan. he always said, it's uh, training to be a man. Strengthen your heart. And so... Uh, he was hard on us for a reason, to make us better, and he knew that if uh, you're strong here, you're always going to be strong here. So that was the key to my apprenticeship. Uh, it wasn't fun, but it was probably the most valuable six years I've, you know, spent in my 29 years of life yet. Hey, uh, the other fact is that okay. what he learned had to do with human beings, as Kimura it then expressed. He said, "Okay, the okay. apprentices. Do you, are you planning to treat them the same way?" <laughs> Would anybody here want want to uh, be treated that way? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. No. Masochist. <laughs> Masochist. Right. It it takes a special person to be an apprentice, right? Uh, I didn't think I could do it.
So it takes a special person to be an apprentice. Had I known what it would have been like, what it was going to be like, I would have never gone. Hij weet niet, maar hij denkt, er, hij denkt het wel of dat hij nog dezelfde zou zijn mocht hij die zes jaar niet gehad hebben. But once I was there, there was no going home. I had already sold all of my possessions. Uh, I, I had uh, gotten rid of my apartment. I had nowhere to live. I had nothing in the United States. So I was there, and so I was going to. I could never expect somebody to come to me and say, uh, "I would like to study with you." And treat them that way, and expect them to stick with me because it's not Japan in the United States right, right now. Yeah. Well, I have a lot of questions. Uh, the Japanese would never answer a question like this. Maybe you're too too much Japanese now, uh, or they would be very polite, uh, but not really say what they think. My clear question is: You have probably seen uh, the exhibit by now, yeah. okay? And that's the first uh, thing you ever saw in, about European bonsai in reality. You've seen a lot on the internet before, but now in reality. Yeah. Now, how does that compare to what you know? Like, for example, American uh, best uh, this Rochester exhibit. Uh, that's one thing, and the other thing. How does that compare to the Japanese exhibit? So, I understand. I understand that uh, anybody who's pursuing bonsai from the bottom of their heart <coughs> wants to, at some point, believe that they're reaching a pinnacle of the art, reaching a, a higher level of the art. But. But I think in order for Europe to continue to keep climbing, you guys have to be looking at your exhibition in terms of how can we improve the trees that we've got. We've gotten this far, how do we get this? So during my, uh, during my third year of my apprentice, Mr. Kamara said, you know enough now to be dangerous. I think Europe knows enough to be dangerous now. Yeah? Okay? But, but, he also always told me, anybody can get to this level. It's getting to this level. That's the hardest, right? So you can go from here to here in this exponential climb. Once you get to here and you plateau, taking that next step, right? Going from Europe to the level of Japan, that's the most difficult step to take. That's where you guys are at right now. The same. No. No. No, but I think there's a I think there's a fine line between quality and craftsmanship. Um, and making everything look Japanese, right? I think the thing that separates Japanese bonsai from the rest of the world is the attention to detail, and not saying that all of their trees look plastic, but their attention to detail, and their attention to quality and craftsmanship. Uh, they take, uh, a good they pot, good a good stand, stand, a good grass, a good display, a good show, okay? All of these areas there need attention. There are people in America who think that there must be something like an American bonsai style. And of course, there are lots of people in Europe who think that we will have to find something for ourselves. What do you think about so I think that bonsai issue? is a drag mirror of culture. Uh, bonsai is an afspiegeling van de ja, cultuur, plaatselijke cultuur misschien wel. So bonsai in the United States is never going to be as, as uh, refined as bonsai in Japan because the American spirit is a lot looser and freer than the Japanese The spirit. most beautiful aspect of European bonsai is the fact that your culture, the cultures in Europe so are so So I consider artistic. that your key element that you need to work to expose when you're creating bonsai, an accent as, as a European style. Not necessarily uh, <laughs> intentionally, but to let that flow, let that become part of your bonsai. That's what's going to separate you from the rest of the world. Is it possible to make a decent living with what you're doing uh, in America? In Europe, it is what do you not consider decent. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ah, in the United States, uh, there's opportunity, right? There's opportunity for bonsai, just like there was opportunity in Europe maybe uh, five or eight years ago. You got in when it was on its exponential climb. With, with everything, 
with everything that comes to a level where it's starting to become a very highly practiced art form, all of the people that aren't practicing it at the highest level get weeded out. And so in the United States right now, you can still do bonsai professionally and not be that good. And so there is opportunity. I always kept a close eye on what Europe was doing. Toen hij in Japan was bij Kimura, heeft hij tegelijkertijd ook wel in de gaten gehouden wat er in Europa gebeurde op bonsai vlak. Als je dan teruggrijpt uh, naar uh, tegen cultuur aankijken, Oh, the, the Japanese. Are they interested in what Europe does? Um, I don't. I don't know if Japanese bonsai artists are particularly interested in what anybody else is doing. Okay. <laughs> All right. <coughs> But America or Europe, they're focused on Japan, right? So they don't use the internet. They don't uh, have these multiple media resources. They just. Well, there is a, quite a few things which were invented in Japan. Let's just speak about judo and other things. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, one day, uh, Japan woke up only to find that they are not number one anymore, and they are only number ten or so. Uh, so, will that ever happen in, in bonsai? Ah, uh, the difference between bonsai and judo. A bonsai tree takes however many tens of hundreds of years. And a judo athlete takes three, four, five, ten years to develop, right? So, Japan's number one asset compared to Europe and the United States is the time that they've put into each tree. It's passed from artist to artist. That's the only thing that separates them now, at this point. Some people say bonsai is not a Japanese game anyway. If anything, it's a Chinese game. Uh, if the Chinese uh, jump onto bonsai like they jumped onto many other things, what do you think the world of bonsai will be like in 10 years? <laughs> um, I'm going I'm to stick with bonsai as a reflection of culture. So, now at this point, are you still mimicking Japan? Is Europe still copying Japan? Unless we copy Japan. Bonza is an art form. Ten years ago, that was not so clear. Now it's pretty clear. Uh, what's the Japanese situation? Do they think it's an art? I don't. I don't know if the Japanese even contemplate what bonsai is. I think they just do bonsai. Bonsai is bonsai, right? Art form, hobby, doesn't matter. It's bonsai. Part of their culture. Well, in the Western sense of art, most would agree that an artist is an innovator. An artist is a person who questions tradition and invents a new tradition. And I wonder whether that is not radically opposite to the general Japanese culture. Uh, well, I've got to be careful because I'm not Japanese. Ik ga er voorzichtig antwoord geven, gewoon nog omdat hij geen Japaner is. But I think in a culture where tradition reigns, it takes a special person to change things. And I think that's where Mr. Kimura came along as being such a genius, because he stepped outside. Well, that's perfectly accepted, and obviously he he did a great job, a job, and will eternally go into history of bonsai. However, is it not that in Japan it is not common to want to step out of the box? While I'm saying that in European or Western sense of arts, that's your job. You 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 want to step out. But most fail. But but that. Whereas in Japan, it really takes a very strong person to to even dare doing that. The difference is they're not wondering whether it's an art or not, so they don't feel like they have the job of an artist. They have the job of a bonsai. Ik zie 
very rare. So once a year, Sakura gives a demonstration for uh, white pines. Other than that, maybe you see uh, a few different individuals, two or three people, one time a year doing demonstrations for. Other than that, well, they don't do demonstrations. They don't. Verder zijn er eigenlijk geen demonstraties. But when they do demonstrations, they don't finish a tree. Als ze demonstreren gaan ze trouwens ook niet proberen om een boom af te werken. They make the tree, they set the framework, and they say, now I'm going to take it home and make it look nice by the magazine to see how the tree turned out. How do Japanese learn about bonsai? How do Japanese learn about bonsai? Japanese learn about bonsai through, they call them kyoshitsu. Kyoshitsu is the same as a club, right? They have a sensei, and Mr. Kimura doesn't have a kyoshitsu, but Mr. Kobayashi has a kyoshitsu. Mr. Suzuki has a kyoshitsu. They have students, they come once a month or once a week. They pay and they study, and that's how people learn bonsai in Japan. If I look at this audience, uh, there I, I would assume that 95% are good to very good already in bonsai, and about 99 to 100% are just amateurs, but they are very serious and want to improve, and they will improve. Now I wonder, is that in a Japan, is there a large population of people who do that for serious, or is just the professional who do very good bonsai, and the the rest is just customers? There are semi-professionals, so they get a license by taking a test that's constructed by the governing organization. They have to take a test and examen afleggen by an organization that that regels. So the Nippon Bonsai Association wants to ensure that Japanese bonsai is always taught at their best level and correct script. The test is very strict and strict afleggen ook wel. Most current professionals couldn't pass the test. Zelfs een heleboel van de zogenaamde professionelen geraken niet door die test. And they basically since about Europe. 15 years or so, this has faded out, and we have seen very rarely American bonsais who came here more than once. Hand, I know firsthand that in the opposite, uh, 15 years ago, some people started to from Europe go to America and teach there, and now there's quite a lot well, there how frequently. About starting this old trend again for Americans also teaching us not not a one-way street. People want to hear what I have to say. Well, sure. well Ryan, to tell you the, the truth, you, you, you have a big problem. The, your big problem is that your name at the moment is 100% connected with Mr. Kimura. Okay. So everybody has the highest of expectations. That means you can only fail. Okay. <laughs> this room was packed, standing room only. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we begon, zat the zaal hier vol. And now, when you finish, it's half empty, yeah? And you just don't. So, I'm no different than anybody else. Oh, it's a custom. I'm no different than anybody else, right? But everybody expects for me to be Mr. Sora. 
Two years into my apprenticeship, I realized this was my thought to myself. What have I done? And this dachte ja, what have I done? But being able to do bonsai at this level, which for me is the best I can get by seeing the pressure of expectation. Um, ja, en dan de druk uh, van de verwachtingen eigenlijk. Oké, okay, daar gaat hij dan maar mee om. So, every time that I come to an event, I give my best. And why is that? If people like it or not, that's their choice, not mine. En dat is dat jullie om te bepalen of dat je het goed vond of niet. En daar houdt hij zich verder nog niet mee bezig. The day will come when you will be judged by results, and the results will have to be not only demonstrations, will have to be trees that really blow you away. Otherwise, anything else is not good enough. Yes. Now, we know that most amateurs make the biggest mistake of in the choice of material. It's not good enough. And then you can work for 20 years and you will do a great job, but it will just not be really good. Now, I, I know that you have a different approach. Tell us about so, that. Part of the advantage of the United States not yet being great at both sides, is that there's a lot of great material and not a lot of people that can work with. We have possibly one of the best collectors of Yamadori in the world. Hij uh, vermoedt dat ze daar in Amerika een van de beste verzamelaars van uh, bomen uit vrije natuur hebben. And he lives down the street from me. En hij woont toevallig heel dicht bij hem. Oh, you live down the street from him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, people expect me to produce Mr. Kimura. I expect myself to produce better. Yeah, ambitie heeft hij. Hij wil verder gaan dan dat. Maybe I can. Maybe I can. Maar het zou kunnen dat hij dat niet aan kan. But if you're not striving for something better, you're wasting your time. Maar als je geen ja duidelijke ambitie hebt die je hoog situeert, dan breekt dan breekt je tijd. I'm trying to be better. Of course, that starts with the quality of your material. I was had the great luck to have been in his garden six weeks ago. I saw his garden. Well, with just my experience of seeing many, many things in the in the world, in, in many parts of the world, I can tell you he has more quality, world-class raw material than the so rest. You must have a lot of assistance to ever work on these trees because you ever you cannot do this alone. In the past, like the okay. assistant. Now, now for serious, you of course will want also American assistance. Will you take European assistance? Yeah. And the question: Oh, that even will Europeans say the I'm going to assist here. Now, what would, for example, I mean, because that might be a serious question. I, I would, I could see a few guys actually wanting to do that. Now, what, how, how does that work? Do you pay them, or do they have to pay you, or how long do they have to work and this? And so, what, what's your well, idea about that? People want to come and study. If somebody wants to talk about being an apprentice, now we're, now we're talking about more than two a year or two commitment. We're talking about a series. So it would have been very rude for me to go to Japan expecting Mr. Kimura to give me 30 years of hard labor, mistakes, sacrifices for a year's worth of work. That's not the way it works. And although I can't ask the same that he asked of me. For people in the West, uh, I would still ask for a, a higher level of dedication than other endeavors require. I think I think everybody wants the same thing, right? They want to know a better way to do something that's been done for this long. And so every time somebody comes out of Japan with a little bit more knowledge, a little bit better technique, a little bit finer product, now all of a sudden people say, I want that. And I think that's what Marco offered. But I don't think bonsai matters if it's Japanese or European or American, right? People take what that person has to offer, they utilize those tools, okay? And then they use what's inside of them to create bonsai. Which is why I think no matter how hard you try to emulate or mimic Japanese bonsai, bonsai will always be a reflection of you and not what you're trying to copy. So, the less that we try to copy, the more that we try to reflect what we're thinking and feeling in our bonsai, I think the purer the product will be. The thing to take away from Japanese bonsai is the craftsmanship, the attention to detail, the dedication, the time invested in each tree, the time invested daily to bonsai, to doing it at a level that is as high as it can possibly be. That's not something that should ever be smirked at 
or uh, you should turn your cheek at as not being valuable because ultimately if we're saying we're doing this as an art form, this is an art, this is an art, okay, why would we not practice this art form that we're so passionately arguing about with, with, with anything less than 100% of our heart and 100% of our effort, right? Not consent footage, do good phone time. I've never been asked that before. Well, I actually asked that before, and there are statements. Just read the, the, the Spanish word. They actually say, several people said that. I can prove that in writing. The whole Paul cannot possibly know what he's doing because he's not Japanese and certainly not a Zen Buddhist. What do you think about that? Well, I think that that's not true. <laughs> I'm not Zen Buddhist. Uh, I hope that I can do good bonsai without being Zen Buddhist. But is it not? That something that maybe not exactly Zen Buddhism, but something that is similar, like attention to nature, okay, that a certain humbleness, okay, that is probably required, or, or am I wrong here? I think it's dedication, right? Dedication. Dedication. Dedication, yeah. dedication to something besides yourself, right. which is this truth. Well, that's the Zen Buddhism. Is it who you are? <laughs> That's what they say. Forget about yourself. New York. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Uh, how much did you know about the bonsai before you leave America and went to Japan? Uh, Anything more, much, something? <laughs> how much did I know about bonsai in terms of how good was I? Or how much had I done before I left? Well, uh, I don't know. What was your level before you leave America? Ah, very good question. Yeah. So, um,. I had done bonsai for, or not, I mean, I, I had been passionate about bonsai for uh, maybe eight years, ten years before I went to Japan. But I had studied in books and magazines, and in college I would drive to, to learn from masters down in Los Angeles or up in San Francisco. Um, once I got to Japan, none of that mattered. He told me to forget it all, it was bad habits, and uh, everything I did for the first two years was wrong. <laughs> the way I walked, the way I talked, the way I sat, the way I looked, the way I did bonsai was wrong. And that was his method of getting me to sacrifice that part of American and European culture that we call pride, right? He always said pride is, pride is the number one uh, inhibiting factor in your bonsai education. Until you can say, I can't, you never will be able to uh, become good at bonsai. What's that? <laughs> you forgot everything that you learned before you leave. Ah, <laughs> uh, for six years, I put it back here. Yeah? That was very hard. And then uh, in March of this past year, I moved back to the United States. And for six years, I had put a part of me away. And when I moved back to the United States, I had to get that back out. And that was very difficult. Yeah. OK, let's, let's speak about this trait. But many people were not here when we started. So am I right in saying um, what the process was? First, this was upright, and then we saw a few good sides. Uh, you decided, uh, we decided to, to lean it a bit like this, uh, to have this sort of as a front. And then it was very much on this side, but we, we radically put all the green on this side. Why? Because it was a bit too wide, and, and, and we want to make it more compact. And we didn't want the green here and the gin here. We want to bring the green over to the gin. The other way is not so possible. I mean, you cannot bring over the gin easily, almost not at all, but you can always bring over the green. So we're bringing over the green on the side of the tree, meaning all of a sudden the, tr uh, the green, the crown, goes together with, with the gin, and the tree is more compact which brings out the trunk much more powerful. That's, that's what, what you really want. And you make, in the end, uh, uh, the crown even much more compact than it is now. You make it nice and clean. And then, if you have still some time, 
we clean that bark down there. Is that a comprehensive sort of? That's, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> If I had a turntable, I would continually be showing you this, but I don't have a turntable that I can keep it like this. So, uh, as soon as I finish this lower area, I'm going to turn it, and we're going to look at it. You guys are going to say boo, or you're going to say yay, all right? And then we'll know that we're on the right track, or we need to sort of readdress things. Yeah? Let's do that. That would be great. Deadwood. Can you ever create artificial deadwood that is as good as nature? Not me, no. Can you? Is it possible? Well, in the long run, maybe. After 100 years, yes. Ah, 100 years. Yeah. If we're willing to wait, right? So, I, I think it's very fun to carve. Okay, get out machines and we carve. Okay, and if we see all of this wood flying everywhere and we think, yes, we're doing bonsai. But I would always caution you because you, you can never create something as good as nature, right? So before I get out the big tools and the big machines and I start carving, I say, does it really need it? Is this necessary? I think anybody who creates good bonsai is doing things because it's absolutely necessary and not because it's a good idea. So for this tree, we have some artificial deadwood here. What would I do to this? I would, I would reduce it. I would try to improve it. But ultimately, I'm not going to ever get it to look like this. Okay? It's not going to happen. So we do our best. We don't make this a focal point of the tree. We utilize what we already have. Now, in, in the event that we have artificial deadwood that is a focal point of the tree, Hire Kevin Wilson. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, is there the hope of Kibuda? <laughs> huh? Uh, there is a lot of that wood in the trees you see now. Is there the big hope that we copy Kibuda? Okay. Uh, can, can, I, can I rephrase your question? Uh, a statement, okay? Uh, in the past 15 years or so, we have watched Kimura, we had him over here, we read a lot about him, and we have learned that Kimura is mainly about using a lot of machines and with brute force creating artificial deadwood, which looks kind of good from far away in a photograph, but when you're very close, it doesn't look so good, and he says, well, we will do that later. So many people got this impression, Kimura is all about creating artificial deadwood. Okay, that, that is sort of the, the situation. Then some other people came and said, no, he only did that because you gave him crappy material and that's the only thing he could do. Now, uh, so you, you're more or less saying try to avoid making uh, artificial deadwood, which really is not what, what we thought Kimura is all about. Uh, I'm not saying avoid it, but you have to understand, Mr. Kimura is making deadwood. He's not trying to make the deadwood not look unnatural. Okay? He's not trying to make, mimic nature. Mr. Kimura is a sculptor. He's an artist before he's considering this natural element. And so when Mr. Kimura works on dead wood, he's working on creating depth. He's working on reducing mass. He's working on improving balance. Okay, so when you look at Mr. Kimura's dead wood, right, and it's all smooth because he sanded it and carved it. He doesn't care about that, but when your eye and you look through his dead wood and you see shadows and you see lips and you see curves and twists, that's what he's trying to get you to see. So when you're creating dead wood, it always depends on what you're after, what you're trying to achieve. He uses dead wood as a means to balance his trees, as a means to counteract the motion that he puts in the branches, as a means to give more depth, right? So when you look at that tree, this tree is this deep and not this deep. Right? Very different. So, there's always a solution. The quality of the material dictates the quality of the final product, though. In the end, it always does. Mr. Kimor, some time ago. And I said to him, okay, you are known, especially in Europe, for your introduction of what we now call modern bonsai, which is radically different from what we had seen before, which makes totally new uh, dimensions in bonsai. 
So how did you sort of come up with this uh, radical change? And he said, I never had a radical change at all. I'm only doing classical bonsai. Uh, <laughs> nobody could believe this thing. I don't, I don't actively think about what I'm doing right now. I don't know if this is classical bonsai or I don't know if this is uh, modern bonsai. I just do bonsai from here. So I look at this tree and I say, this is what it needs. It does do. There is only two kinds of bonsai, good bonsai or bad bonsai. There is no need for this silly, worthless <coughs> classification. That's what you said, and that's the kind of feeling I got from Mr. Kimor also to try. How about the following answer? Yes, I understand what you're saying. There is no need to classify food because there's only good food or bad food. All the rest you don't need to know. Okay. Okay. There's only two types of music. It's good music or bad music. There's no need for classification. How much sense does that? Can, can we? Could we agree possibly? That is perfectly okay for the artist not to care about this and just do what he needs to do anyway. But it's for other people okay to classify this in order to, to do it, have some reasonable conversation. Are you asking me? I'm asking you. I don't need classification of anything. Uh, if people want to discuss bonsai, then that's their business. If people want to do bonsai, then that's their business. Uh, I'm more concerned about doing bonsai than talking about bonsai. Yeah, and so that's always reflected in the quality of the trees, I think, that somebody produces. You see the start of the trunk and, and the first branch starts at one third and you, you, you basically you never put something in front of the trunk. Now I see that you put just about everything in front of the trunk, uh, which is of course, I know it's, 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 the way, the, the, it's now the modern way, if I may call it modern bonsai, it's a modern bonsai way of working. So, does anybody in Japan care about these old uh, sort of Jonaka things, or are they, or are they more or less a retro of 1960? Don't, don't, don't misunderstand what I'm doing here. This isn't an example of Japanese bonsai. We zijn niet verkeerd, zegt hij. Dit is niet direct een voorbeeld van Japanse bonsai. This is an example of my interpretation of what this means. So you take this wide understanding of something and try to classify it and put it in columns and definitions so that we can open a book and understand it, it is improper to try and, and do with bonsai. Right? Bonsai is something much bigger than a definition to understand. It's not black, it's not white. So what I'm doing here, there are, everything amounts to a taste. What's your taste? What appeals to you? What appeals to me? What appeals to you? It's always different. So my taste with this tree, I think this is as much of the trunk as I need to be able to see. Okay? This foliage is yeah, my paint. tree is my canvas. The foliage is my paint. I use the foliage to show what I want people to show. Um, or want, want people to see. The stump is for him the duke. The loaf is the verb. <laughs> yeah? And I use it to hide what I don't want people to see. And as there are things that he finds that he doesn't mooi zijn, well, that he stops it, and therefore he has to go. That's as far as I think. And that is his benadering of, yeah, for the sake of the whole thing. Many, many people still believe that is what it is. That this is more the front, and you see these are the back branches, right? Uh, so here you see the trunk, and here uh, you see the back branches. Uh, here you have this, uh, the areas where the bird can fly through. Now, he actually does more or less the opposite. Eh? This is the front that you see, and there is no background. Probably he would like some backgrounding here, but since it's not... There will be. There will be. There will be. Anyway, okay, you may, but anyway, you, you see what I'm saying here, is which, is, which is very different from, from what we thought is correct. Okay, and you are really saying it doesn't matter what is correct, you just do it because you have the feeling that it's right to do that. Whenever we're looking at a tree, and this is something that I noticed in the exhibition that uh, I, I was hoping I would have the opportunity to point on, and, and now I do. 
Okay, you look at a tree. If a tree is standing straight up or even slightly back, when you look at it, it looks like that tree's going. You got bad breath, right? Okay? Do you understand? Do you have that feeling? You ever seen a tree when you look at it, it feels like this? Right? With bonsai, we want bonsai to always be inviting. Okay? Give me a hug. Let's be friends. Come look at me. Right? That's a bonsai that gives you the sensation that says, ah, I want to know more about this tree. This is a person that wants to talk to me. This is a bonsai that wants to know about me. I want to know about it. So, if you see, right, the apex will eventually be over here. But the tree is very far forward, right? Now it's not going to fall over. Okay, we're going to have these branches are going to be back here. Okay, we're going to establish that balance. But we want this bonsai to invite you to be a part of it. Okay, we want to be friends, right? So, whenever we're talking about this, you know, how we were taught was to have the tree, okay, openly exposed and you can see everything and the birds can fly through the branches, right? I don't believe in that. That's not how I was taught. That's not how I see good bonsai being. Right? And it's something I would encourage people to put a little bit more thought into as they create the center. They compare the rest with what they do. And, and I think it's fair to say that if you just look at what, what you see on the internet, I have to say this, of course, I see a lot in reality in America, but that's unique. Normally people only see the pictures on the internet. And a lot of Europeans see that various beginner sort of trees or some people who don't have very much of a clue uh, unfortunately come more from America than from other parts of the world to put it in a diplomatic yeah. way. How, uh, how do you compare yourselves to Japan? Is Europe at the level of Japan? Are you? I think actually going back to Walter's statement, it has a lot to do with diplomacy, because in America, Americans tend to be a little bit more diplomatic in judging a bonsai. And if you were to ask an American, uh, what do you think of my bonsai? The American's going to say, well, yeah, it's actually quite nice. It's not bad. But if you ask a European, he's got to, as in Walter's case, he'll just take it right down to the Bavari. Right. How bad it is. But that's the only way a bonsai is actually going to improve. Very, yeah. I thoroughly agree. How do you compare yourselves to Japan? Vergelijk ons zelf met bonsai in Japan. Uh, there's there are people here who uh, whose opinion I would I would I would really like to know. There are uh, you know well known artists in this room. Uh, I'd be curious to hear your feedback. Where do you guys stand? On what? <laughs> Behind? You still? In time. In time. In time. You getting closer? Are you getting closer? I think so. Yeah? yeah. I think we're getting different. Getting different? Yeah. Okay. But closer, but in a different way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I see Europe changing, going, if Japan is going here, Sorry. Europe was going here, and now Europe is sort of going here now, right? So Japan is always going to be Japan. Yeah. But maybe Europe is starting to find its own face, I its own so. identity. It's maturity, yeah, we lack in the truth. Sure, absolutely. And that's where we start talking about. You don't ever have to go here, right? You don't ever have to be Japan. You don't ever have to meet the quality of Japan. But the level of craftsmanship, the skill that's put into the trees, that's what defines good bonsai. That's still the defining difference between Japan and Europe, Europe and the United States. I in my mind. That we have probably really want to change the world. Uh, and, and, and want to get somewhere, whereas I cannot feel that there is such enthusiasm in, in Japan. Is that correct? I, I think absolutely so. Make no mistake, tradition is important, innovation is this much more important, right? Tradition is something that's beautiful and it's great to respect, but tradition is a rut when it comes to advancing art forms. And that's where Japan is, it's in a rut, right? Europe, uh, the innovation that you see here, the things that people are doing with their trees, advanced techniques that they're picking up just from seeing pictures, hearing things, thinking about things. Uh, it's incredible. It's encouraging. It's inspiring. I would encourage you to not lose that. 
If you ever fall into this form of tradition, your bonsai will plateau just like the tail. Maybe the discussy bamba. That of course is always dangerous. And then you think at one point that you are so good uh, because of your your people are so good that you have a genetic advantage. Okay, I, I'm Austrian. When I was young, I was Tyrolean, and I really honestly thought the Tyrolians had a genetic advantage. Out of the first 50 best skiers in the world, 45 were Tyrolians. Uh, we hebben weer de, uh, top, uh, de 50 top skiers in de wereld waren er op dat ogenblik 45. Ja, op de 50. Uh, uh, unfortunately, was number 45. <laughs> <laughs> Hij was dus degene die eraf viel. Oké. Okay. Now, how have times changed? Yesterday, a Croatian won one, the most important race in the world. How deep can you fall? You see, perhaps <laughs> if, if you were too sure about yourself, that, that is always a, the sign that next day you're gonna fall. Op dat ogenblik dat je te zeker, zelfzeker wordt uh, van jezelf, op dat ogenblik begin je eigenlijk terug te keren. We see that their apexes are very small, right? They don't accumulate snow, so that they're not broken in snow. So you always have to justify the tale you're telling when you style a tree. You guys like it? Yeah. Come around slowly. Which is better? No. Yeah, yeah. this is European. In America, everybody would say yeah. And here they say nothing. Nothing means yes. In the United States, people go yeah. yeah. All right. Here, everybody's just. <laughs> you hate it. <laughs> Because here's the deal, right? I could make this tree by myself. But if I ask you, we can make a better tree together, right? Because one mind can only create so many things. But like a billion minds, right? We can make a super tree. Okay? So you guys need to seize this opportunity too. It's your chance, right? It's your chance. So when I'm all done, we're gonna we're gonna talk as a group. You guys are gonna give me feedback, okay? And we're gonna make it a better tree, alright? Okay? Uh, how do we get so how do we get a natural looking uh, char your piece of dead wood gin on a pine. Does anybody have any ideas? <coughs> Most people would paint the lime sulfur on it, which ends up looking like somebody painted the tree with lime sulfur. Okay. Okay. All right. uh, and some people even put these kind of trees into exhibits, which then looks okay. Somebody put on lime sulfur before it can make an exhibit. Some other people uh, take some other things, like bleaching, whatever uh, measures, uh, uh, and uh, some people just scrape it off, and some yeah, people don't care. The idea of, of exhibiting a tree is to show off the tree, not the work. So if this were going to be exhibited, I would need to clean this. Uh, mocht deze tentoongesteld worden nu, dan zou die grote shari moeten gereinigd worden. Okay, so I take a toothbrush and I scrub off all the green. En hij doet dat dan door met een tandenborstel al dat groen weg te borstelen. And then I take lime sulfur and I dilute it. And One part lime sulfur, five parts water. How lime sulfur doesn't turn bright white. Turns um, als dat ook droogt, gaat dat dan ook niet hel wit worden, maar eerder grijs. Two parts water. One part lime sulfur, two parts water. One part lime sulfur, four parts water. Never bright white. Never 100% lime sulfur because you're showing off the green here on the work. This idea that there's more to bonsai than just the tree, right? There's the display, there's the stand, there's the prop, there's the style, there's the, the, the amount of wire, right? There's also the attention to the deadwood. Is there any artificial deadwood? Does the deadwood look the same color or an ideal color? There are so many different parts of the bonsai that you can improve on, right? That, that Europe still has to improve on, that America isn't even thinking about. But you guys are to the point where it's time to start. That's how we build better bonsai. And so can you langzaam better bonsai opbouwen. But we know that this apex has lots of small buds, <laughs> and in another year or two it's going to be a very full crown. So just with what we have here. The styling is a compromise between what you see now and what you'll see in two years. A few people who do what is called spaghetti bonsai. Meaning, uh, you look at the tree from far away from a photograph and it looks pretty good. But if you look close, it has all these very, very unnatural bends. You're saying, yes, you're doing a bit of what I can say, but this is only for the moment, uh, and, and this is certainly not the end product, uh, and we, 
this will be cut off eventually, or, or what I, it, will, it will disappear because it is not not what we really want. It's only all, all, for the beginning. Is that correct? Yes. And some people, in Europe misunderstand that and say, "Oh, Mr. Kimura does this spaghetti, but you call it spaghetti, so it's okay." It's not okay. No, it's not okay. And then here's the other thing too. When we're developing bonsai, it's very easy to say, oh, we don't need these branches, right? Cut them all off, okay? Now we've got the tree, and in 10 years, these are the only branches. We're talking about developing bonsai as fast and as well as we possibly can. We have to understand that these needles, right? This is our engine. The branch structure has been set, okay? This tree has its direction. We're going to let it recover from this operation, right? We're going to improve this deadwood here. Right? Uh, and we're going to develop this tree from this point on. So, I'm not going to fool with the branches anymore. There are small fine tweaks here and there that could possibly be made that would make it better. But, this is as far as we're going to take it today. I have one question. Uh, the years so this tree will come into probably the final part. What do you think the final part could look like? I think a plot very similar to this would be nice, okay? Um, Maybe even a little bit thinner so that the tree is mounted so, up. I fully understand that this apex looks funny, okay? It's very flat, but we've got buds in here. There's nothing more that I'm going to do to try to make this look better today, right? We've got to think two years down the road. But the tree came a long ways, I think, right? Um, and from here on out, it's, it's smart development. But every time we touch a tree that we develop, it needs to get better. Every time we touch it, it's got to take the next step. You guys, this won't go. It's not perfect. I know it's not perfect. Yeah. Would you? I mean, given the time, would you like to develop that dead wood? Would you carve it, or are you happy with the shape? This. I would absolutely develop it. Yeah. First of all, we've got a, this this line here. This is a very unattractive line. Okay. The original and, front had better dead wood. And uh, and brush over. Like it. this from the original front, we could not see this face. So. We show the base and we deal with this by adding more movement in this area here. One thing that we can do. Maybe this is too much. Okay? It zou wel eens kunnen much. dat het uitrijden de lengte dus van die yin uh, te veel is. Oh, so we take it off, it's gone. Vandaar, yeah. vandaar dat het verlopen blijft. <coughs> Thank you guys for being patient. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. I think you were there. I probably was, yeah. We actually picked one of those off of it and ate it. And then he told us it was for the exhibition. Yeah. <laughs> so we yeah, just got a person from a different tree down the street. Oh, from a 7-Eleven or something.